I hope you're doing well on this uh, eclipse season. <laughs> the last video I did, someone requested uh, a talk or a discussion about the concept of oneness. Uh, and at the same time, understanding that we are all one or that we are all connected to the same thing and having boundaries. And I would like to emphasize that it is very, very important to have boundaries, not have walls. Boundaries, not erect walls. So let's start with the concept of oneness. As someone who was at one point in my life, a very, very long point in my life where I was not awake, the concept of oneness was rejected completely by me. And you might be watching this video and reject the concept of oneness as well. I find spiritual concepts that have been passed down throughout human history have been muddied, have been contaminated, or have been misunderstood including the concept of oneness. So you have some people say, oh, take the high road, don't listen, don't interact with this person, you know, as if you are looking down, uh, you are uh, superior to this person, don't, uh, don't lower yourself to their level. That's not the concept of oneness. Or you might uh, hear people say, turn the other cheek. Turn the other cheek sort of suggests that you're allowing people to abuse you or perhaps that you are a martyr. That is also not the concept of oneness and definitely uh, not spiritual. You're not supposed to, because you believe that we are all one and that we are all part of source or the universe, or that we are all part of God, or that God is in all of us, that you allow yourself to become a doormat for others, because that takes away from your self-worth, from your self-empowerment, from your self-love. And that's where boundaries tend to come in. Boundaries are how you want to be treated and how you treat others. So going back to seeing people as one, and then thinking this person did this to me and this is a horrible thing and it's really, really low and I'm gonna take the high road. That's not oneness. That's actually not, uh, not spiritual at all and nor, <laughs> nor is it humble to think that way or project that, that energy uh, into the world. Because the same way you are looking down at someone and thinking that they are low lives Chances are someone's looking down at you doing the same. And is that what you want? The concept of oneness actually, uh, the way I understand it, is to comprehend that we are all an extension of source or the universe or God, whatever you want to call it, the light. Each and every one of us carries the light inside of us. Some of us have dimmed our own light and some of us have chosen to shine our light. Think of yourself as a puzzle piece and of the people around you as the various other puzzle pieces that complete the picture. You are important as are they. The way you are going through life, your beliefs, your experiences are important just as important as their beliefs are. You are valid the same way that they are valid. They might look different than you. They might think different than you. They might behave different than you. They might uh, have different beliefs than you. They might even oppose you. But you understand that that is their journey and that that is their right and that we are here to ultimately awaken. And we don't all awaken by following the same path now, do we? The path that led me to sit here in front of you right now and do this video was a horrible one. <laughs> 
and many people tried to warn me and I never listened but it was my path it was my choice and it was ultimately what got me to become spiritually somewhat enlightened I hope and here I am doing these videos in this channel trying to help other people understand as well before I woke up I would judge other people I would hate other people I would project onto other people I would fear other people and that is not the concept of oneness the concept of oneness is truly truly to embody the the phrase live and let live no judgments involved thank you this isn't for me same way you go into a i don't know some sort of cuisine that you serve yourself you don't go and condemn all the different foods and dishes that you don't like you look at them and say oh isn't that interesting but no thanks i'm gonna go here and try that or consume that because that's my choice you don't sit there and poo poo the dishes that you don't like or the spices that you don't like because you know what some people might go eat those life is the same <laughs> think of yourself as a cuisine <laughs> and the people around you as different cuisines than you do you need to condemn them no you don't you make a choice on what it is you are what it is you represent and where it is you'd like to be and you will simply attract those that are alike because that is the law of the universe should someone trespass on you you don't necessarily have to react a big thing about losing your ego or the ego being shattered and becoming more spiritually enlightened is the reactivity which the ego loves the ego loves and lives in reactivity towards other people and feeling superior or feeling victimized by other people that dissolves you stand strong in your light and you emit it regardless who condemns you regardless who adores you you remain humble and you remain knowing in your heart that you are not to harm other people the same way you don't allow people to harm you boundaries but also not to emit the energy of hatred towards those who are different in any shape or form or thought than you because you don't want them to emit the energy of hate towards you either and that is a boundary you choose to embody the qualities that you want to attract in people if you want to attract understanding then you become understanding of others if you want to attract fairness and justice into your life then you become fair and just towards others emit that energy the main law in this universe is like attracts like if you want to attract love into your life then you become loving and lovable you don't have to hate those who want to hurt to hurt you i'm not saying go go drool over them and love them and and, and beg them for mercy no no you distance yourself from them but you remain grounded in who you are you remain solid in your vibration and you don't allow the actions of others to lower or tamper with your vibration or the frequency that you emit into the universe very difficult to do takes a lot of practice but it can be done and that is the meaning of oneness 
while at the same time having boundaries. If you want to attract abundance, then guess what? You become abundant yourself. Don't give what you don't have. That's not Establish the outflow in order to allow the inflow to come. See, we've lived, uh, we've been brought up in this, I don't want to use words like matrix, <laughs> but we've been brought up in this world, I don't know, not understanding, not being taught the laws of the universe. And uh, I believe the laws of the universe are critical. Critical enough that we should have learned about them maybe even in school. <laughs> Rather than going through life being thinking that we're being tossed around by life. Where it is ultimately us that attract everything. Everything, yes, everything. Including illnesses into our reality. Now, mind you, some things are passed down generationally and we are also right now breaking through all of these patterns and all of these generational cycles it's a long ways to go but we are here and we are trying to raise awareness to all of us so in a nutshell the concept of oneness is to understand that we are all humans animals bugs, fish, birds, you name it, whatever living creature and some might argue even things that are not living uh, carry consciousness, you know, like crystals and mountains and rivers. They carry conscious energy inside of them as well. But everything that exists on this planet is connected to one source or the universe or God, or whatever term you'd like to use, that fractals itself on this planet in order to experience itself in different ways. And thus, the rise in consciousness that we are currently going through. In the past, I used to not like insects and bugs, and I would be afraid of them, and I would try to kill them. Now I know so much better. I don't necessarily love bugs, but I've learned to live and let live because I understand and I see that which connects all of us and I see it in everything now. When you begin to understand this, when we begin to understand this on a collective scale, things like abuse, things like crime, Abuse in all its shapes and forms, including animal abuse, will cease to exist. And this is when we begin to truly live, not only enter, but live on new earth. As we move from a fear-based existence to a love-based existence. And when you live in love and in harmony with all the beings around you, you find that you respect their boundaries and they also respect yours. I hope I was able to deliver the message well. Please do feel free to leave a comment underneath this video or any other topics that you would like me to discuss. I'm still considering doing lives, but for now, you're welcome to join me in my Patreon where I try to do weekly lives. I will leave the link in the description. Have a lovely eclipse experience.